There's no denying it, melee weapons slap in Remnant 2. The gunfire team put in some serious work to make these weapons look cool, but it's the changes to their functionality that really make them shine in combat. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're revealing five insane melee weapons we think everyone needs to find. As always, I want to start with a fair warning that we will be discussing elements of various worlds and bosses throughout this video. If you haven't beaten Remnant 2 at least once, close this down and come back when you're ready for the goods. If you've beaten the story or you just don't care about spoilers, strap in and let's do this. The first melee weapon on our list is truly inspired by the oversized greatswords made famous by the Soul series. The Atom Splitter is a massive two-handed sword that quite literally might be my favorite looking weapon in the game. Hunting this down will take a bit of patience as it can only be found in a Dungeon Injectable, a specific handcrafted world piece that can spawn on multiple tile sets. What you're looking for is this large robotics facility, real Matrix vibes here. You'll notice a ledge up high and a number of robotic arms that come down and move elements of the pods around. To reach the ledge, you'll need to time a jump perfectly, landing on the top of the pod as the robotic arms are lifting it up. As it's ascending, time your jump to the ledge well and continue moving forward until you reach your reward, the Atom Splitter. As you might suspect, this thing is slow to swing but has high base damage. It's a beast, but what makes it special is its unique mod, Fission Strike. Whenever you neutral evade and attack at the same time, you'll release a wave of charged particles dealing 150 damage, passing through all targets within 20 meters. Charged neutral evade attacks increase range by 3x and damage by 25%. It's a powerful effect, one unique to the Atom Splitter and in the right hands could be the perfect weapon to round out your build. The second melee weapon on our list is a bit of a hybrid. Elegant and deadly all in the same stroke, the Huntress Spear is one of the only polearm style weapons in the game, but with its unique profile comes some excellent benefits. To obtain the Huntress Spear, you'll need to defeat the Huntress in Losa. She's the boss riding atop the ram-looking creature and can be found in Briella's Garden, an area that can spawn attached to any of the following zones. Brockwith Quarter, Forsaken Quarter, and Iron Burrow. She'll attack you out of nowhere and you'll need to keep the pressure on her. At one point, she'll jump away to the rooftops above. Find her and keep trying to engage her until she jumps back down to the street level. If she does manage to escape, she'll sneak off to take a little nap in the ornate arch structure in Briella's garden. Fun fact, if you've picked up the Dreamcatcher melee weapon, you can use it to extract an item from the Huntress and enter her dream realm, allowing you to kill her not once, but twice. Killing the Huntress in the Dream Realm rewards you with the Sacred Hunt Feather, a crafting material you can take back to McCabe in Ward 13 to craft the weapon mod Familiar, which allows you to summon a Raven minion that automatically attacks targets in range for a short period of time. Interesting for anyone out there building out a summoner. Once defeated in the Dream Realm, you can then fight her in the Mortal Realm back at Briella's Garden. Defeating her rewards you with the venerated spearhead crafting material that you can turn into the weapon we've been chasing, the Huntress Spear. What I love about this weapon is how it completely flips the script on what to expect from a traditional melee weapon in the game. Yes, it's a spear and that provides the extra range and that elegance you've come to expect from weapons of this type, but you also have its unique mod power, Javelin, which allows you to use stamina to throw the spear as a ranged projectile. The icing on the cake? You don't even need to retrieve the thrown spear, it just magically returns to the player, making the retrieval process a non-factor. More than anything else, the fact that the weapon is just one of the few spears in the game makes it appealing, but the added flexibility to throw the weapon and weave that into a playstyle or build, that's what makes the Huntress Spear special. We slipped in a few shots of this next weapon in some recent videos, and boy did you guys call us on it. The next melee weapon we think everyone should aspire to obtain is the World's Edge, and look, I get it, not everyone is cut out for apocalypse difficulty, that's just fact, but that shouldn't stop you from aiming high or prevent us from talking about one of the coolest weapons in all of Remnant 2. The World's Edge is a massive two-handed sword that you can only unlock by defeating the game on apocalypse difficulty. As you can see here, our boy Livid is definitely no slouch and managed to scoop it up. There's no secrets tied to obtaining this, it just requires that you complete the campaign on apocalypse. World's Edge performs much the same as Atom Splitter. It's a large, beefy sword that does high damage and has a relatively long swing speed. It does, however, have a unique mod power called Horizon Strike, which is about as epic as it gets. 
When using a charged attack, you release a wide horizontal projectile that deals damage and penetrates all targets. Essentially, you're getting two weapons in one. You've got the stopping power of a heavy melee weapon and the flexibility of a powerful ranged attack so long as you have the stamina to activate it. Horizon Strike has a massive horizontal span, and if you factor in that the attack passes through all enemies, yeah, you've got a really potent weapon on your hands. I won't belabor this one. If you think you have the skills to tackle Apocalypse, you most likely are already on the hunt, so keep at it, and someday World's Edge will be yours to claim. Since that last weapon was more of a flex than anything else, I did want to throw in a little something extra. This time we're hunting down a true secret, the Krellax, which can only be obtained in Indira's End within Yesha. To find this, you'll need to reach the way back of the map in this chamber. Standing at the base of the stairs, slightly off to the side, you'll trigger a pressure plate that will open up a secret door on the side of the room. What you're about to step into is a grid, but you can only access certain rooms from certain directions, so you need to follow this map exactly if you want to find the Krellax. It's not hard to obtain, but it does require some specific steps, so follow along carefully and you'll be able to claim your prize. The Krellax is less of a melee weapon and more of the developers inserting their own twist on Mjolnir into the game. Its unique mod Krell Edge allows you to throw the axe using a charged attack in a straight line. Enemies hit will be overloaded, taking 50 shock damage every 5 seconds for 10 seconds. Much like the Hunter's Spear, when you throw the weapon, it magically returns to the user, so no need to find it and retrieve it once thrown. You can also use this weapon like a standard axe if you'd like, but it's really meant to be hurled into the face of enemies, taking full advantage of that shock damage. With its bright teal hue, this next weapon will make you believe ever so briefly that you've stepped into a George Lucas film. But it's no lightsaber in our hand, it's the Spectral Blade, a katana-like weapon that's lightning quick and has an incredible unique mod power. To obtain this weapon, you need to defeat the Nerud world boss Shahala, the Spectral Guardian. This is the normal boss you fight, but in case you didn't know, you can also fight the real Shahala in metaphysical form by inserting the override pin into the terminal right before confronting the boss. This quest item can be found in an abandoned tower within the first Nerud overworld. It's going to be in a slightly different location for each person, but the tower in question looks something like this on the map. Defeating Shahala is no easy feat, and actually I find it to be one of the best fights in the entire game. There's so much going on, it takes a concerted effort to peel back each layer of the encounter and really understand the fight. However, once you do, it's satisfying to watch that final sliver of health disappear from the boss, and the reward is well worth the effort. You can craft the Spectral Blade from the Edelon Shard dropped by the world boss, and like I said before, this thing is really special, touting insanely fast attack speeds and decent damage to back that up. The real magic, though, is its mod power, Whirlwind. We're not talking spin to win here. This isn't some half-baked ARPG. To activate this ability, you need to neutral backdash and charge attack at the same time. This will trigger a flurry of attacks that damages all enemies within 8 meters. Because of how fast the weapon is and how easy this effect is to trigger, you can actually weave this into your playstyle with relative ease. If nothing else, it looks awesome, even strapped to your back. The final weapon on our list today is Nightshade, a pair of melee claws that'll have you channeling your inner Nightweaver as you dance around enemies dealing massive crits and stealing their life. Truth be told, these are not the weapons for me. I prefer to keep my foes at a distance, but if you really want to live on the edge and think you can build something powerful around these weapons, then be my guest. To obtain Nightshade, you need to claim the alternate kill on the Nightweaver. This is actually easy or hard to achieve depending on your skill, gear, and playstyle. To trigger the boss's alternate form, you need to deal enough damage to her heart to break it open before you take her down to zero health in the first phase. The key here is to wait for her to do her channeled beetle attack. That's your best opportunity to nuke down the heart and break it open. So long as you break it and kill the boss in phase two, you'll have achieved your goal and you'll be rewarded with the crafting material, the Nightweaver's Fingers. Turn these into McCabe in Ward 13 for your prize, Nightshade. What I love about these claws is their mod power, Beyond the Veil, which turns your neutral dodge into a misty dodge, something we talk about at length in our recent How to Cheat Death video. Not only do you get a slightly better evasion mechanic, but every time you neutral dodge, you buff your nightshades, giving them lifesteal for 5% of their base damage. If you manage to perfect neutral dodge an attack, this effect is doubled to 10%. This weapon might not matter so much in Apocalypse, where things one or two shot you, but in Veteran or Nightmare, having lifesteal is a great way to stay in the fight, and since triggering the effect is rather easy, you can take full advantage of the effect and add onto it with additional items and traits. 
Claw weapons definitely won't be for everyone, but they're certainly cool and give you an entirely new way to approach a build in Remnant 2. And there you have it, five insane melee weapons we think everyone needs to find and use at some point in Remnant 2. Obviously, there are many more secrets in the game, so we want to know which weapons do you think deserve to be on this list. Let us know in the comments down below. You better believe there are more secrets out there, and we'll be with you every step of the way, so if you appreciate all the work that goes into creating these videos, do me a solid hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. It means a lot and goes a long way to helping out the channel. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. Right now, we're doing a giveaway for Starfield, which is coming up, and that link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.